were just talking about like the entheogenic midwifery work and birth work. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what I wanted to, uh, where was I going with that? Where was what, there was a there was something I wanted to pull out from that. Um, that was what I wanted to pull out from that because we had spoke briefly about the high dose experience, so to speak, and you know, why and what you personally felt the need was or the benefits of that experience. And um, and you've highlighted some, you know, some interesting points in relation to the female, you know, experience, biological, physical, spiritual experiences, childbirth, pregnancy, and so forth. And you mentioned a few times in relation to trauma, um, things that may be experienced in women through their experience and it was also in relation to you saying ah oh, some people got their trauma and they need high doses to get beyond beyond some stuff egos and all the rest of it so i'm where i'm going with all of this is basically tra trauma and psychedelics there's a conversation i had with Bubba a few times and he's like man i'm not you know you know i'm <laughs> you know yeah that, that was me and Baba C. he's like you know your women y'all talking about healing and medicine i don't know that what i take the mushrooms for yeah you know. I know, no man i know so i would like to hear your perspective man i would like to hear how you feel and what, what what's the role that psychedelics you feel from your experience mm -hmm. plays with working with people people black people african people you know women through their experiences you know what you know what comes up what kind of work do you do what work is required in dealing with that trauma well being ready to address it, you know, certain traumas, um, again, being aware that these things exist and how they're affecting your life, how they're affecting your relationships, your career, your money, you know, just how we show up in the world from day to day. Um, some of these things are impacted by, by how we were in our parents' womb. You know, it was in London, in London, I got the term uh, epigenetic impression you know, and that's a real thing. So it's like, if we're even coming here as spirit beings, having this human experience is like on this dimension, you just shit is gonna, it's gonna weigh you down. You know, things are gonna happen that you're aware of, not aware, things that are in your subconscious mind, things we see um, on TV, things they've told us in school, like it's just a storehouse of, of information and things back there. So there's something that all of us have to go inside of and kind of filter through these experiences and take out things that are going to serve our highest good and process and release the things that don't, you know, if we're going to continue to evolve and be greater, be the greatest versions of ourselves and really have a great overall quality of life. You know, so like say with Baba, he's into the higher doses and the trans dimensional villages and transhumanism and plank length and a lot of things that he talked about that I really did not understand there. And I didn't, you know, but one thing I did say, I felt that in order for people to be able to grasp a lot of these concepts and healing and things that you can't skip the ground level floor, you know. Even with certain religions and things, I feel people could be better if they went and truly addressed who they are without the pain, without their traumas, and truly showing up as their authentic selves, you know? Um, so again, I just, I, there's that part of me that doesn't want to control the work, because I don't, I don't control anything, but there's that thing that I feel that people should take certain steps before they just take off, you know? certain healings and you know everybody has mommy daddy issues some some shape form or fashion you know some things are in our bloodline a certain ancestral things and curses if that's what you want to call them that are over our families and entities that are able to come through when we're not at our strongest point um i just feel like again there's certain purification and certain cleansing and things that need to take place as you continue to grow and build your individual medicine practice. You know, Baba can take 50 grams. Somebody else may, you know, oh, I want to be like Kalindi and I want to take 50 grams and that's Kalindi's journey. You may take 50 grams and you may have a better experience than Kalindi or you may end up having some emotional or mental imbalances, you know? So I'm all about being on your own level and again, allowing spirit 
in your intuition to guide you on your own individual medicine practice. I don't compare myself to anyone. You know, I have people that say, oh, I never took mushrooms, but they want to take 10 grams because they hear that's the highest amount I've taken, you know. Um, so again, everyone developing their own practice, but I'm all about the healing. Again, I'm a Pisces, so I'm a bit empathic. And I can feel a lot of the pain and the trauma and are people just not showing up as their authentic selves. And, you know, so I'm all about like, let's, let's move those things out of the way, put them in their proper place and like, let's live. You know, that's why I'm in Jamaica now because I refuse to keep, again, doing the same thing and expecting different results or being traumatized in the environment. And now you want to take 10 grams, and then you're still in these environments with the people and the triggers that put you in that place in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm in Jamaica because when I came here, it felt like how I feel on the inside. You know, I, I love to garden. I can garden all year round, you know, getting fresh fruit off the trees. I can't swim a lake. And, and that's a separate childhood trauma as it relates to my best friend drowning when we were children. But even being here and using the medicine, Darren, I found that it has deeper effects. Like, I find that I don't need those higher grams of mushrooms here. Again, it's a journey, but I can take three or five grams here, and it feels like an eight or ten gram experience because mm -hmm. I feel that the vibration here is higher. You know, there's not as much programming and toxicity. You know, there's more trees here. There's more nature, the sea. So there's information that you're just breathing simply through the air every time you take a deep breath. You know, so that's what my personal um, mission, you know, for one is for self. You know, I'm not healing anybody if I'm not healing myself first. I'm not taking care of anybody or holding space for anybody be at birth or the mushrooms if I'm not doing that already for myself. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but again, using the medicine for your own individual practice. You know, I go to the conferences and I speak and I sit on panels and I'm still a rookie. You know that, you know that, Darren, I'm still a rookie. <laughs> yeah, we all are, we all are out here, sis. We all are. <laughs> I'm just a sort of... rookie. Some of us just are pulling it off better than others, man. We're just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you. You know, but that's what the medicine is supposed to do. Oh, so like with, with traveling, I find like people are sitting in these rooms and they're debating about mushrooms or, you know, well, I work for this organization and, and this is what we do and we're this and we're that. And then at the end of the conference, you're crying your heart out. You got other stuff that's going on. So the thing is, before we want to continue to sometimes hold these conferences, you have to hold space for yourself and your feelings and your emotions. You know, um, my father was locked up most of my life, you know, um, maybe 18, 19 years being incarcerated in prison. You know, I didn't know during the time that I had abandonment issues, you know, that I had this anger for black men, that I have this disappointment, this rage, you know, um, picking men that I should have never been with in the beginning, you know, I have beautiful children because of them, but you continue to self-inflict when you're in environments that are poison and toxic, you know, so I'm finding that as a black people, we have to do this work mm. to clear out to clear out the poison and the toxins and the low vibrational energy that is being infused in our environments and our homes at a rapid rate. We have to have this to counteract the effects of the immunization, of the molestation of our boys and girls in our communities by, done by some of the elders growing up. You know, we can't continue to just pray it away, think we're going to pray it away and mushroom it away and smoke it away and sex it away and do all these things and we don't get to, to the root of our trauma, recognize the people who were victimized themselves, who have in turn, you know, possibly victimized us and send that shit back to where it came from, mm -hmm. you know. It was through this work with Baba, with the medicine, and even with Kai, I read the book, The Food of the Gods, like this is the food of the gods. You know, so that's what I'm finding uh, and found that in the, in the medicine journey with myself. So 
I remember being on the medicine and I thought I was going to die. And I was in my room and I was in my bed and I'm like, okay, I think this is where people lose their mind. You know, they're going to find me in my apartment dead. You know, have people been thinking <laughs> I've been crazy all this time talking about this mushroom stuff. And I saw a woman in a casket. And I don't think it was me. But the message, the download that I got was, did you live your best life? Did you do all the things that you said you were going to do? Did you love your children, you know, the best way you could and take them places and do all the things that you wanted to do? You know, what's going to be your story? And Darren, my heart fell into the pit of my gut. You mm -hmm. talking about like a, a, a fear or a... I don't even, I, there's no word. You know, we want to put fancy words all over these mm -hmm. things to describe how we feel and you really can't, but it was like judgment day. There was no Jesus mm -hmm. there. There was no Allah. There was nobody there but myself. And to ask myself these questions and to see that I am the God over my own life. And in that moment, so that's why I use the term goddess or, you know, I'm a God or, you know, my God self is because I'm fully accountable. Mm -hmm. For processing things, my perception, how my ego filters through circumstances and situations is I have the power, you know, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still activating. I'm still finding clues and tools and have to continue to use this medicine to continue to blast off things that I'm picking up in my environment, off the radio. Look at this Corona shit. Everybody who know how to grow medicine, if you don't have medicine, you have to push this stuff away. It's, it's, it's an illusion, you know? So we need this medicine and we need these spiritual practices and things to keep us in our God state. We can't allow this lower level shit to continue to take over us. Everybody got depression. Everybody got anxiety. Everybody's wearing masks. Everybody is just on this low vibrational energy. We didn't come here for that. So I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for Baba to introducing this into our communities as a way to resurrect ourselves. Oh, you know, sure. I was using the term re rebirth for so long. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is rebirth, but it's also a resurrection because you have a lot of people who are dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of people who their spirit has disconnected from their body, from the trauma that they've endured or violence or, you know, certain things that I'm not even aware of. You know, my life has protected me in certain ways from certain things, I feel, so that I can hold space and that I can keep a clear vision and thought, mm -hmm. you know, and press through what, what I need to be done for myself and my family. But you have to check in. You know, we have to use these medicines and introduce them to our children. Wow. So you've gone somewhere that I wanted to go. So let's go there. But also keep in mind, I wanted to talk about PTSD, post-traumatic slave syndrome, and your thoughts, because you mentioned epigenetic imprints. Yes. Yeah. Impressions. And like, yeah, impressions. And what that's about, does it connect with PTSD, PTSS? And, you know, is there work that we you us can do in addressing that if that's something that you're into or aware of and um also yes yeah, so then we get to psychedelics and children man are you saying that children should be taking psychedelics new children should you know yeah. well yeah as far as the post-traumatic slavery syndrome like so there's that part of me too that there's certain things that i don't even identify with where are these stories coming from where are the what is this history coming from you know, so there's that part of me that I haven't had any of my direct ancestors say that they were slaves. You know what I'm saying? So in that, just like television, we have to be careful what we take on and make it a part of ourselves. You know, I may not be able to speak on slavery, but I can speak on how crack came through and wiped out our community. You know, so, so that, that in itself you know, is work. And again, these low vibrational environments and the food that's available to us, the music that's available to us. You know, I see where I lived in Mount Clemens, the quality of the black men. I know they're traumatized, but there's also this water treatment plant that's right in the community. They don't put those sewage in water treatment facilities in white neighborhoods. They don't. And I'm not all completely black and white, but I am sensitive to the needs of my people because that's who I am. You know, so we have to 
sometimes step away from church, step away from these various institutions of learning that are sucking out our power and our resources and get a sense of self, you know? So that takes by any means necessary. So through this work, I've, I've learned that with healing, that you have to want it, live it, eat it, breathe it by any means necessary. You know, so a lot of people need to do this deeper work and they're like, oh, oh no, you know, I, I go to church or, or this or that. It's like, okay, then you're not willing to do whatever it takes to get the help that you say you need, mm -hmm. you know? So there's certain things that we have to step totally outside of ourselves to uplift ourselves, uplift humanity. And something that I found is even uplifting the ancestors who have not even been born yet, you know? so it's, it's it's so many levels to this thing, but we have to do this work. And pull out of these schools that aren't teaching our children shit. Pull out of these jobs that are wasting our time and pretty much enabling us to be oppressed even further than what we are. Even the churches. I know everybody loves church and grandma loves Jesus. I get it. But at the same time, collectively, it's not serving us. You know, and it's breaking down the connection that we have with our ancestors, that we have with this earth. Even with me, everybody's ancestral work is different. But for me, I, the, the earth is my greatest ancestor. You know, through this medicine work, I've activated the DNA. Us as black women, we carry the divine blueprint of this, fam of this planet and family. And what it means to have a strong home and raise children and cultivate the earth, like we have it inside of us, everything that we need. So it's using the medicine and using these other practices and detaching from these things that keep us from being our true selves. Mm. This is nothing new. You know, so you have to be willing again to risk and pull away your, your doctorate degree, your PhD that you've worked so hard for and sacrificed relationships, children, blood, sweat, and tears, and be willing to say, fuck all of that shit. What do, who am I? What am I passionate about? You know, who is my authentic self? You know, you got people that may be homosexual or whatever you choose to do. If that's your true self, then live your truth. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to come to Jamaica there and I still don't know how I'm here <laughs> in some of the most beautiful places, but I had to move everything away that was blocking my spirit and get to my truth. You know what I'm saying? Of what works best for me and it's activating me in ways that I didn't know. I'm learning things that I didn't know. Um, my daughter's great grandfather who she never met was a Jamaican man. So some of this stuff is supernatural and divine because it's what my children are going to need. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't come to Jamaica and do what I do and go to places that I go. I hope that they can and do, but I have to do my soul's work. We're all here on a divine mission. Mm -hmm. I won't say all of us, but some of us are here on a divine mission and we must Tap into that. Allow the medicine and allow our path and our works to activate our spiritual gifts. You know, if we don't do that, we're dying and we're doing a huge disservice to everybody who we come in contact with. You know, I stand behind, I stand behind psilocybin. You hear me? I hear you, sis, loud and clear, man. That's why I'm here with you, spreading spores, man. And as I said, I know... Uh, I, I smell the X-Men and women, you know, whether they're direct, <laughs> indirect, I'm like, okay. And um, as you share it, it's I can feel the power, I can feel the energy, you know, and this is why we have to do what we've got to do because you're going to inspire, not just me, like you're doing now, others, and, you know, we just got to keep, we've got, got to keep this going. And what I got from Bubba, you know, over the years was that, just like you said, man, I appreciate that Bubba was on his journey, man, and he never once tried to infiltrate my journey with his journey. You know, he never yes. like, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it that way, and you know, all the rest of it. And, you know, over the years, after meeting the likes of yourself and others, I just realised the power that we had as a, as the collective, because we do all have our own perspectives. We do, you know, but we all pledge allegiance to suicide, you know, one way or another, you know, that that's our, our common denominator. So I did want to touch yeah. on, you know, the children, you know, there's something about children, yeah. um, and, you know, just your views on children taking psychedelics, you know, is there an age thing, is it a... A space, a time and space that you reach when it should be, you know, just because I have my views, I would like to know what your views are. <laughs> and we still haven't explored, I'm really, what I want, 
what I'm, really, I'm keen to explore, and we may not do it today, but the women and entheogenic thing, I, it's just, we've covered it too lightly, <laughs> yeah? Because I want to I wanna get okay. into stuff. I want to get into stuff, man. I, really, I personally want to get into stuff. And maybe not today, but I've been doing, you know, um, well, for years I've been doing research, you know, on the goddess, the feminine mysteries. It's something I've been interested in simply because I came out of a woman, you know? And then I had two children. Absolutely. Daughters, and I had two daughters, right? And then I've got a matriarch, you know, family, basically, you know, of because um, we only had one male figure, you know, in the country, in you know, on, on my mum's side of the family growing up. So I've seen the power of women and understood and was always curious and interested. I like women. I want to be able to chat women up. I want to be able, you know, all these things. So I wanted to study the science of women, you know. There's been an interest for multiple reasons. But one thing I am interested in, and um, it's even a taboo amongst women, we you know, we, we discover, and I'm sure you have in your work, because you highlight and speak about it a lot, is blood. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> because I've always been fascinated. I've always been curious and interested, just in general, and done my Googles. I've read books. I've spoken to people who know, say they know, people who don't know, who share what they share. But this is your profession as well, you know. So I'm curious to know just... Because when we done the women and entheogens talk, that was what it was all about, you know, psychedelics and the feminine experience, everything from childbirth, pregnancy, menstruation, menopause, all of that type of good stuff. And, you know, some of your wisdom, I would just like to be, I would like some of your wisdom, some of your knowledge. And I'm also, because I brought this subject up to other women, some of them don't even want to talk about it. Some of them feel that I shouldn't be interested in this. I shouldn't know the mysteries. And um, you know stuff like well, that. Uh, they're, they're, quite interesting, but um, I know I, I know some of it already. You know, I'm privy to some of it already. But I'd like to hear it from the horse's mouth, as they say.